Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and today we're going to go over plasma cutting a little bit. This is not a full plasma course, but just a few ins and outs if you get your first plasma cutter. So if you're a hobby shop type of a fabricator, you're looking to get into the plasma cutter. So I'll show you a few of the tips and tricks and some of the consumables to get you started. Alright, so we're going to be using our thermodynamics slash ESOB to go either way. Cutmaster 40. It's for uh, up to 40 amp cuts. Alright, so just like any other plasma cutter, you're going to need a couple things. You're either going to need 220 single phase, or some of these have adapters where you can run 110. It can be a big limitation on how much amperage you can run. You'll have to look up your machine to see what that limitation is. But if you're wanting to cut sheet metal and that kind of stuff, that 110 will do just fine. And you'll also need some source of good dry air. And you're gonna need some type of compressor. So in our system, we run a uh, dryer and separator. And then on your actual plasma torch itself, it's a pretty simple setup. It's only got a few consumables. Right. So it might vary on machine to machine. But a lot of times you'll have your electrode that's generating the plasma and your cover shield. Now you'll hear terms like swirl ring and stuff like that. They all, they'll name them something different, right? So on this one you have the cover shield and you have these replaceable O-rings in here. Then you have your drag tips. So there's some writing right on the tips of these. It's going to be hard to see, but you can, you buy these by amperage. So this is the cut master 40 so we'll go up to a 40 amp cut tip so then you'll have your end caps so one is just a standard drag shield for up to a quarter inch and then there's all kinds of attachments that you can get so for this we're just going to use a standard drag drag tip and if you're just using the up to a quarter inch you can just use a standard shield and the drag tip now if you're cutting sheet metal this works this works out very nice then they also make a drag tip for anything over a quarter inch. So they got this end cap that's threaded and you can either put this drag tip on or you can put a tip on here for gouging. So if you want to gouge off a set of brackets off of an axle housing or whatever you want to do. And you have some O-rings and stuff like that in there but for the most part that's all your consumables are all right here. You don't need any kind of gas or anything. It's all made through the electrode and the, and the contact tips. So let me show you these. All right, so like anything else, we welding or anything like that, it's all about safety. You still want some kind of eye protection. I'm using a pair of, of uh, dark shades. If you turn your welding helmet down, you can use that just as well. If you're going to do a lot of this, especially in a confined area, I would always suggest a respirator for all the fumes. All right, so we're running this off 220, but you won't get anything until it sees air. So the minute you hook up the air, it'll come online and allow you to cut. Now you can adjust for how many amps you're running. So we'll go from 15 up to 40. And you'll have to play with your settings just a little bit just to see if you're running 40 amps to cut sheet metal, you're going to be wearing out your consumables much faster. Now, just like any other kind of process, you have a ground clamp that you have to connect. Now, this is 3 16 wall, 2 inch square. We'll do a little cut of this, and I'll do a little cut on the sheet metal. And I really prefer this drag tip for the 3 16 Now, any other time, I'm wearing a respirator, so I'm not inhaling these fumes. It's hard to talk with it. Now, you could always just freehand, right? You need a ground. On this, you'll pull the trigger. And you'll hear the air will come through. So first I'll freehand. The compressor's got to run. Now there's absolutely no way of doing this without the compressor. I always suggest a pair of gloves. You're going to get this what's called dross on the back side. It's like slag. And that's just freehanding. And you'll have to get good at what you're doing. And I would always suggest if 
unless you're just trying to contour, like these silver pins, they show up really well when you're cutting. And you can just follow that if you want. Or if you get a straight edge, lay a straight edge on it. And then you just ride up against. If you figure out how much room you need for this diameter to your line, you'll have to just work that out. But if you just run along the straight edge, warn you that that gets very very hot so you'll see that the you can cut much straighter edges and you're going to control whether you actually poke through all the way or not with the, the plasma and you can see how deep it cuts and how do you know if you're going too fast or too slow well that's, that's actually fairly easy right so if, if I make a cut You'll be able to see if it's going through. If you see what looks like a rooster tail, that means you're going too fast. All right, so I went down to 20 amp. But if I go, start going too fast, you see that rooster tail, that means you're not cutting through no more. So that does say to slow down. So if you just want a free hand, this, this tip will work out good for that. Or if you had a straight edge, it really works out good for this. So if you got a straight edge, you want to cut an angle on something. Now, as long as you stay in your guide, it'll cut. And you play with the settings for this dross on the back side. So let me show you the other drag tip that you can use on this. I'm gonna put, I call it a cup, I'm gonna put this cap back on. And you can actually just drag on thinner stuff with this as well. Now they tell you that that tends to wear your tips out more. I like the tips that doesn't drag but you can just drag this chip right along here, right on the edge. And then just come through and clean it up. And those sheep will Welding tables from Harbor Freight work really good for this kind of stuff. Now when you start getting close to the quarter, don't start right on it. I'm going to raise my amperage up to at least 40. So you can always just start a little off the edge. Now the one nice thing about this, you don't have to have an oxyacetylene kit in your house. Now, if you're wanting to pierce, especially over a quarter inch, I would come up just a little bit. Then, we can go into it. So you just pierce it and then you can cut out. Then they also have a couple guides you can get. All right, this one's got some slag on it. We tried some other materials it didn't like. That allows you to, so they make different kinds of wheels and all kinds of tapping. So this will just set on here and allow you to just run. So on most plasma cutters, the plasma comes out in a clockwise swirl. So your most accurate part of your 
cut is going to be on the right side. So if you're running outside contours, you run clockwise. And if you're going to cut inside, you cut counterclockwise. Granted, if you're free cutting by hand, it's only going to be so accurate. But if you're buying one of these to retrofit and put onto a small plasma table for your garage like we're going to look at doing, well, that becomes very important on which side is going to be the more accurate. And you can always get different torches for these if you want to run this in a, like a Langmire or any of the other plasma tables. You can buy a straight torch or you can use a torch like this. That's what it's made for. But it doesn't have to be a super high end. You don't need a 100 amp plasma cutter. And the other nice thing about these, as I mentioned earlier, you don't have to have an oxy fuel setup. You don't have those tanks in your garage. Because I'm, I'm sure that the insurance company loves that. So get you some kind of plasma cutter. I got this one at Baker's Gas. Bought it when I bought my, uh, my Miller 220. It's a good machine. If you buy the right tips, you can use it to gouge as well. But make sure you get some safety gear. And uh, you'll definitely need a good pair of shoes too. Because as it's blowing down, it's right on top of your feet. My boots were getting a little hot on that one. You can stand in a different direction. I get it. But check out some kind of plasma. If you have any questions, let me know. We're looking to get in the plasma tables, which would be uh, something we can also use on our trail vise. If you haven't seen that, check that video out. Any questions on this, leave them down in the comments below. So until the next video, this has been the 4x4 Fab Shop. Get out in the garage, build something, and support the trades. We need more people to do.